See, the thing is, he didn't want to be here tonight. Oh, come on. Sit around, listen to a guy who's alive. Talking like a guy who's dead. Giving us advice on what to do till we get where he is. Oh, what? Myron, Frere Dunn says all you have to do is have an open mind, yeah. right? When one of these guys says open mind, what he really means is open wallet. Yeah. Oh. Monty would like to get started, and Fred Dunn is ready in the solarium. Oh, thank you very much, sweetheart. Oh, Myron. Myron, isn't this exciting? Oh, yeah. I'd sooner inhale steel filings, rusty steel filings, than let this phony into my pocket. Sweetheart, no one has asked you for a dime. <laughs> a dime you can have. It's the folding stuff I'm worried about. Please help me. Let's go. Well, we're all friends here, so please forgive me, but I have to brag for a moment. As of this day, our column, Star Science by Montgomery Banks, now appears in 3,200 daily and weekly publications here and in seven foreign countries. <laughs> Thanks in part to my assistant, Coco Cunningham. I'm gonna do you, baby. I'm gonna do you so good, I'm gonna wish I was you. Oh, wow. What now? Oh, take your time, honey. We've got a whole hour. Just make me crazy. What if your husband comes in? <laughs> There's no chance. He's got a fresh crop of suckers in the house. He'd never leave that, even to see this. Too bad, he'd really get off on it. If you haven't already met our guest, you're in for a real treat. Frere Dunn is a hypno-psych therapist with incredible gifts. For He's him, it's a gift. For us, myself. it's gonna cost. Shut up. His work is about potential. It's about reaching out. What you can see and touch is not necessarily all there is. I am not a channeler. I don't uh, claim a particular spirit speaks through me. I just kind of open myself up to those on the other side and whoever's passing by, and, and that's who you get. I don't know how it works. I've been doing it since I was a kid. I just hope it does some good. <clears throat> it's nice to be here. Palm Beach. Buffalo, hurry it up. It's Elvis. Good deal, Mama. <gasps> Mama? <laughs> Stop. Elvis, listen. I had a dream about you. I had the same dream, only I woke up screaming. It's a joke. Oh, listen. I dreamed that I was your opening act in Las Vegas. <laughs> Must have been a tough room. No, oh, no, it was terrific. I, 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 I always wanted to work Las Vegas. Then practice, baby. Practice. Huh, shut up. Easy for you to say. You're already dead. <laughs> That's not a joke. You got to work at it. It's the only way to get to Carnegie Hall. Unless you take 7th up to 57th Street. <laughs> oh, Elvis. You still are the king. What are you talking about? I'm the king. Don't you remember? I am the king. He must be Mad Myra and the Mattress King. Am I right, booby? Hey, this guy's for real. <laughs> oh, we are very good together, baby.
Well, hold on. You're telling me he spent the night in jail? Mm-hmm. Suspicion of grand larceny. Man. You sure it was Donnie Dogs DeBarto? Yeah. I mean, how many Dominic Clemenza DeBartos do you know? Yeah. I only knew one, and that is Donnie Dogs. The funny thing is, he claimed a New Jersey address. DeBarto grew up in New Jersey? Mm-hmm. He was snoozing in the sleeper of a semi pulled over on the side of the road between the turnpike and the interstate. He slept in a truck? Mm-hmm. Loaded with big screen TVs. He couldn't prove ownership, so the state cops brought him here until they had time to check it out. Donnie Dogs DeBardo slept in the sleeper of a semi. I love that. <laughs> a little declassé, all in there. What do you think? You think he had it made up with uh, satin sheets? Donnie. Uh, I'm Sergeant Lance. This is Sergeant Lorenzo and you. Dominic DeBardo. Uh, Dominic Clemenza DeBardo. That's right. Uh, that's wrong. Look, I know Dominique de Barto. Dominique de Barto is kind of a friend of mine. And you're no Dominique de Barto. Hey, that's funny. You know that? That, that? that Nixon thing, that's funny. You're a very funny lady. But uh, I'm not in a thing for jokes, if you don't mind my saying. You may know somebody with my name, but that don't mean I ain't me. Well, your rap sheet said that you were from Jersey. Who could tell? So? I'm from New Jersey. Dominic de Barto from New Jersey. Where's my truck? Where's my merchandise? You know, I'm catching a few winks. Next thing I'm talking to cops, I'm looking to lock doors. Your truck is all locked up in the impound yard, Mr. Uh, DeBardo. Safe. Yeah. Well, it better be. There's a lot of crooks out there. I'm not surprised my TVs aren't already in some kind of cop flea market. Hey, look at what fell off of the truck. What's your name? Sergeant, Detective Lance. You're a very attractive lady. Detective Sergeant Lance. Is there a first name with that? What do you do? I would guess Vice. You do very good as a Vice cop. Am I right? Vice? Homicide. Whoa. Now I know we got our connections crossed. No way should I be getting a third degree from some homicide cops here. Oh, oh, I get it now. I'm going to have every dick in the place coming in here for a deal on a big screen, huh? I'm very disappointed in you, Detective Sergeant Lance from Homicide. I thought you was looking in to see am I comfortable. No, Mr. DeBarto, we just thought you might be the DeBarto that we know of, Donnie Dogs. That is a very funny name. I got four consultations from last night's session, Coco. Thanks for your help. Hey, friends help, friends bubble <laughs> I loved your Elvis. I swear I don't remember a word. Oh, no way. You're conning me. I'm telling you the truth. And I'll tell you something else. You should be getting a byline from Star Signs and a piece of the action. You're sweet. Hey, it's true. Monty had less than 100 clients before you went to work for him. And they were mostly almanacs. And what did he say last night? They're now 3,200. Well, I'll tell you something, Cotton. If it wasn't for Monty, I'd still be doing greeting cards. He's the one who sold all those columns. But you're the one with the talent, darling, and you know it. Without you, Monty'd still be doing Burma shave signs. Doing what? Youth. Wasted on the young. Thanks, Alex. Oh. What is Donnie Dogs up to? Well, I figure it's the guy in holding who is up to something, the fake DeBarto. Let's think about this for a second, all right? Now, Donnie Dogs, he takes a kid, he puts him out there with ID that says he's Donnie Dogs, right? He puts him in a truck loaded with merchandise that looks fishy. Now, he knows that the state or the local cops are going to pull him over. And the state cops take the bait. Only they bring him here instead of to the county lockup where nobody knows Donnie like we do. He's making an alibi. Uh-huh. But for what? Nancy, would you do me a favor and double check that? Sure, Mrs. Vandiver is confirmed for tomorrow, okay? We've got a confidential meeting at three at the Pops. With whom? Confidential. Keep this thing closed, please. You've got my life in there. Coco, listen. I want to branch out. You mean other than your three o'clock? A five minute radio spot. Syndicated. Take letters like a radio shrink. A woman writes in with a problem. We do her chart, but we 
work her up like a case. Her options and what we should do. Ooh, I love the smell of liability in the morning. It smells like lawsuits. All right, all right, fine. So we make it vague enough so we're not on the hook. But it has to sound like solid advice. Well, why stop at radio? Why not TV? You know, I thought of that. Maybe that is the way to go, huh? I gotta get dressed. You're three o'clock. It's not come as you are. You must get tired of that. Nah, she pays to belong to the club, and I guess she figures she owns a piece of it, including the manager. Well, you were very gracious. Well, I won't have to be much longer. You're leaving the club? I've got something else lined up. Congratulations. Thanks. I'll see you later. Like I've been telling everybody here all night and all day, Contact my people in Jersey. They will authenticize my ownership of the merchandise. Whoa. <clears throat> so you're on your way. You could persuade me to stay a few days. I don't think so. Hey, be nice. I'm really a sweet guy, you know. We just got off bad because you have some local Ganif who's got the same name as me. We got off bad because you're into a scam with Donnie Dogs to Bardo. That's all busted because now we know that you're not him. What? What, I talk to you, he answers? Who's the ventriloquist, who's the dummy? Don't tell me. Make me guess. Uh, Rita. Uh... Dominic. Hi, Pop. <laughs> Meet my son. Dominique Clemenza de Barto. Junior. Oh, man, I didn't think the world was big enough for two downy dogs. Is... We get this thing with the TV straightened out. Well, hold on a second. How'd you know about that? Detective Lorenzo, how do ducks know when to fly south? How does the salmon know when to swim upstream? OK. All right, so this was your deal to begin with. I should have figured that. Nah, this is Dominic's business. I knew nothing of it. I just made inquiries. I got proof I own a merchandise. You got proof like, well, this Gumbola Limited? What is this, Dominic, a bust out trying to... You buy the stuff on credit through the front door, you sell it out the back door for cash, so the place goes bankrupt, then you move on. That's what this is. It's enough for everybody else, but not for you, right? I'm doing everything you say, it's still not enough. You say go over there, I go over there. Go over here, I go over here. You say get proof, I get proof. Whatever you say is what I do, and you're still busting my chops. Thank you, Mr. DeBarto. Why don't you have a nice life? Take your chops and leave while they're still intact. Wait, wait, wait. You and I, we're having a conversation here. Let's go, Dominic. I'll call you, okay? You want a book? I'll call you. Thanks. Ready? Yep. Okay. Hey. Hey. What's up? We got a dead body in one of those condos down by the waterway. Want to ride along with us, see where the real work gets done? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Have you forgotten where you're supposed to be? Ah. Uh... Yeah, that's right. Court in exactly 30 minutes. I was deposed. Look, a live witness is much better than a deposition. Assistant DA Fuller needs you in court now. Uh, how long is this trial supposed to last? Mm. One or two days, maybe 10. Who knows? Sorry, partner. Yeah, well, I'll uh, try to hold the fort together while you're gone. Have fun. Bye. Come on, we got some work to do.
This is a bunt. They had a glass of wine, they had a roll in the rack, and then he killed her. Yeah, we got no complaining neighbors, got no forced entry, nothing was broken, and we got no murder weapon. Who do you think did it, Doc? This lady have a butler? I hate this crap, you know? She wasn't even 30 years old. Fixed lividity, cloudy corneas, uh, almost full rigor. Fully 10 hours ago, maybe more. What do you make of the tissue trauma to the face? Fingers. Like a hand was clamped over her mouth and nose to keep her quiet. Blade went in, just blew the xiphoid process, then straight up to the heart. She was scared crazy. Adrenaline was pumping, her heart was pounding. I know when I get in there, it's gonna look like she was stabbed by an egg beater. And I bet all he did was stick the knife in there and hold it. Oh, so you said he. Why he? At the farm, this guy was strong. From behind? Yeah, I think so. And he was right-handed. What are the chances of pulling a print up off her face? Bad place for prints. All right, so given the circumstances, eight to 10 hours, where's the best place? Prints on skin, very fragile, 12 hours at the most. But uh, dry, smooth skin, inside of the arm, the breast. Hold on one second. Uh, officer, come over here, would you? All right. So, there were no bruises on the inside of her arms like there would be if she put up a fight, all right? That mirror in there is much too big. He didn't sneak up behind her. Maybe he felt her up a little bit first. You know, a little excitement, a little wheeze in his heart. He reaches down, boom. <clears throat> Check her right breast. Yeah, I'll try. And we have had 18 wonderful years of marriage. 18 out of 25 is not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Will you stop that? <laughs> no, no, she's right, Fair Dunn. We have a wonderful marriage, but you gotta work at it. We make the time. Yes. Dinner out, a little dancing, a little romance. Yeah. We do that twice a week. She goes Tuesdays, I go Thursdays. <laughs> Years, he still kills me. <laughs> oh, Frere Dunn. Does everybody call you Frere Dunn? What kind of name is Frere? Sounds like something you see in a skin magazine. Hey, Herbie, come here, look at this. Her Frere's hanging out. <laughs> Are you nervous about this, Mary? Oh, beyond belief, yeah. He, he was in his car and he was turning around. He wanted to go home, yeah. Oh, don't worry, sweetie. I'll be here when you wake up. Call me lucky. All right, Myron, just relax a little bit, take a deep breath. I'll count back from five, and when I do, you'll be sound asleep. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, Sylvia, this is gonna take about an hour if you wanna go to lunch. Sylvia? Sylvia? Yo, cut! Or should I say, Frere Dunn? Frere, huh? What is, what is that? That French for fake? Nothing fake about it. It's strictly legitimate. Uh-huh. And uh, what is strictly legitimate? Psychotropic analysis. You got a license for this psychotropic analysis? None needed. Just a business license, and that I got. Hmm. You, uh, you actually hypnotized people? Yeah, something I developed in the Army. I could actually put myself under. Gave myself hives and high fever. Kept me out of doing push-ups and having to go on hikes. Now, what do you do for these people you hypnotize? Well, they do it to themselves. It's a major attitude adjustment for most of them. Look, Cotton, there's something I gotta talk to you about. Let's go inside. Oh, no, I'm late. I'm on my way. Uh, you know a young girl named Coco Cunningham? Yeah, we're good friends. What happened? Uh, somebody broke into her apartment and attacked her last night. I'm afraid she's dead, buddy. Coco? Look, I still need somebody to come down and make a positive ID. You up to it? Yeah, yeah, I guess. There must be some mistake, though. This, this can't be Coco. It can't be. Yeah. <clears throat> she looked awful. She'd have hated that. Yeah. I know it's rough, Cotton. Now, is there anything else you can tell me about her? Well. She worked for Monty Banks. Wait, Montgomery Banks, uh, the astrologer? The great one himself. You don't sound too fond. I knew Banks when he ran a string of uh, high colonic operations down in the chicken district, Miami. 
Now he's more popular than the president. Hold on a second. Are we talking about the same Montgomery Banks? You bet. You look at those degrees on his wall, they all came by mail from the University of Bango Bango or some other such place. You're kidding me. But what, what did Miss Cunningham do for him? Everything. And he treated her like dirt. And now that she's gone, you just wait and see. His high-flying days are over for good. All right, thanks, C. Oh, I forgot. I, I left something kind of up in the air, back at the office, unfinished. I'll see you later. OK. So that's all we've come up with so far. If you could run it through, I'd really appreciate it. Just some numbers. Read it. Cotton? Uh, thanks, Mike. to count back from five and when I do you'll be awake and refreshed five four three two one so let's get started you've been away folks look at the time you're lucky I don't charge by the hour look at this There's so much I don't know where to start Myron you heard those stories about King Solomon Rita how you doing they are spectacular. What am I hearing? I'm, I'm, I'm hearing something. It, it was too much. I should have done something small and not so big. I knew it, you know? It's like one of those things you just know. I did it wrong. I sh it should have been smaller. No, no, no. They're beautiful, but uh, I... Uh, I can't accept them, Dominic. I am a police officer, and uh, we can't accept gifts. Police, Melise. Hey, those are from a friend. You can't, what, you can't accept flowers from a friend? I know you can. You're a person, a very nice person. And I'm a very nice person, too. i tell you what, we'll have dinner. You get to know me. Dominic, I can't. You can't what? You can't have dinner? I can't go out with you, period. Why not? Because of Pop? Because I'm related to this guy you refer to as Donnie Dogs? Look, Dominic, I, I have a very busy schedule. I have very little time for a private life and absolutely none for a social life. Uh, this hurts. I never thought this would happen to me. It really hurts. I really appreciate the flowers. They're very nice, OK? Thanks. What happened? She trashed you? You kidding me? It's going perfect. Well, Coco kept track of the business details, the uh, deadlines, all that little stuff. Please. I was busy researching, writing, editing the uh, creative end. What can you tell me about her personal life? Well, I guess she didn't have one. I feel guilty about that now, but she was always on the job because she loved it. She thrived on it. Now, what about her family, Mr. Banks? Uh, does she have anybody she confided in? An older sister in Ohio, and I don't know any of her friends. Uh, it's a hell of a note, isn't it? I should have taken more of an interest. No, I've been more of a friend myself. Can you run me through her personal activities yesterday? We. Worked at the swim club by the pool. We often did that. And I had an appointment at three, and she was still there when I left. OK. Listen, if anything else occurs to you, would you give me a call? Absolutely. Detective, uh, Coco had a black leather organizer, uh, a notebook. Had initials on the front. It had a lot of information in it, personal things, details. Uh, confidential. Could I get that? You know, we've been through her personal effects. I don't remember seeing anything like that. Any idea where it might have been? No, she always had it with her. And I don't know, because I was never in her apartment. Don't worry about it. I'm sure it'll turn up. If there's anything else that I can do, please don't hesitate. Yeah, actually, do you have a picture of Coco we can borrow? Yeah, well, uh, this one do. Absolutely. <sighs> she worked for Mr. Banks, one of the members. Only well and new enough to say hello. All right. Is Miss Cunningham here yesterday? Uh, yeah, she was here in the lobby. Is she talking with anybody? Just Banks. I was only here a few minutes, so uh, maybe you should ask some of the people that are here now. They were probably here yesterday. I'm sorry I can't help. Sorry. Right. 
Dominic, what are you doing here? Hey, now don't be mad. Who told you this was my car? Nobody told me. I got my ways, you know that. You talked to my partner, didn't you? Only long enough to tell me you skipped dinner. Come on, let's go eat. My cousin Zeno's got a place 10 minutes from here. It's a great cook, a very light touch. You love the veal. Dominic. You gotta eat, right? No, I don't. I am not hungry. I am tired. I'm going home. Look, I don't mean to hurt your feelings, Dominic. But you have to go away. And I don't want you to come back. And no more flowers, OK? You're a funny guy. And I'm sure you're a really nice man. But I am not interested. I'm sorry. That's OK. I hear you. I understand. I I'm a little hard to get to know, but that's all right. It takes a little time, is all. Dominic. But I'm, I'm, I'm keeping you. Go ahead, go. Go ahead. I call you. What's up, Doc? Only thing the sweepings turned up was a hair sample. No root, Caucasian, that's it. What about the sperm samples? They were good. We're going to get a DNA profile, but it'll take time. And did you get any prints off the skin? Oh, yeah, you were right. Three prints on the right breast. They were breaking down, so the lab's going to try to enhance them. Later today, maybe tomorrow. All right. <sighs> yeah. All right, Chuck, thanks. Tell you what, Noriko, this might be quicker. We got a six-point match off that wine glass that had the fingerprints on it. Montgomery Banks. Now all I need is a murder weapon. What am I looking for? Thin blade, um, four to five inches, maybe five and a half. I'd bet on a switchblade. Thanks, Doc. I resent the hell out of this. I understand that, Mr. Banks. You've been given the search warrant. You want to call your lawyer, feel free. Sergeant Lorenzo. Yeah. These were hidden in the pool house, Sergeant, under some sofa cushions. Looks like dried blood on the knife blade. Yes, it does. I don't know anything about this. You're under arrest, Mr. Banks. Suspicion of murder and the death of Coco Cunningham. Where were you between midnight and 3 a.m. yesterday morning? All right, I was at home. In bed, asleep with my wife. Your wife sleep too? I assume so, Detective. But then I guess she can't corroborate your story, can she? I did not kill Coco. Talk to me about the items found in your pool house. Murder weapon in Miss Cunningham's notebook. I swear to you, I have no idea how they got there. You swear to me you have no idea how they got there. Just like you have no idea how a wine glass with your fingerprints got into Miss Cunningham's apartment. What? Let's talk about the knife. I have never seen it before. I have never touched it. I don't know who it belongs to or who put it there. What about the notebook? I asked you about that yesterday. If I already had it, I wouldn't have asked you about it now, would I? I look stupid to you, Mr. Cunningham. You were right about that notebook. A lot of information in there. Like the last couple of months, two or three times a week, you and Pamela Short. I've been doing her chart. You've been doing her chart. You've been doing her at the Palms Motel. That's what you've been doing. We've been going through that notebook page by page. Everything we find, we add to the list. You want to save me some time? You want to tell me what happened? I wasn't. I'm going to level with you, Mr. Banks. We got more physical evidence. Now, would you be willing to give our forensics people what they need to make a DNA comparison? Thank you, Rush. Your food is superior. <laughs> Can I get a table near a waiter? Big C. How you doing? OK, a little better, thanks. I hear you got Monty locked up. Yeah, that's right. Well, I hate to tell you how to do your job, but uh... I got a feeling that you're going to tell me how to do my job. Yeah, I've known Monty Banks for a long time, Chris, and he's just like every other good swindler I've ever known. Violence isn't part of his con. Come on, Cotton, I thought you hated this guy. Well, I didn't like the way he treated Coco. She did all the work, and he took the credit. Don't you want to see him pay some dues for that? He'll pay some dues, all right. With Coco gone, his career is dead. But you see, the thing is, he knew it as well as I did. I see what you're talking about. He wouldn't have killed his meal ticket, would he? Uh, hold on. Let's say hypothetically, all right? What if Coco comes to him and she says, look, 
I'm going public. I'm telling everybody that I was the voice of star signs. Yeah, Mark does that, not a grifter. Mine would use his tongue to get out of a jam. Wouldn't use a knife. It's always exceptions to what we expect. Uh, I just don't think he did it. And I want whoever did do it to suffer. It's the way I feel. See you later. I got him. <sighs> yeah, Lorenzo. Hello, this is your friendly neighborhood pathologist. Listen, forensics didn't find any prints on the knife, and I got what I needed from your man, Banks. He's on his way back to London. No way he could have been the man who had sex with your victim. Oh, hold on, hold on, Rico. Since when did the DNA test become so quick? I didn't need the DNA lab for this comparison. I could do it right here. Can you say vasectomy? Vasectomy? Yeah, I thought you could. Your man, Banks, had one. No way he could have left those tracks on the victim's sheets. Bridget, I think I got something in my eye. I don't see anything, Mr. DeBardo. Look a little closer. Ah! Oh. Ah. You okay, Bridget? I'm okay, Mr. DeBardo. Are you okay, Mr. DeBardo? <laughs> Fine. Oh. Fine. Oh. Hey, you're the sexual harassment. All you gotta do is wink these days. It was an accident. I had something in my eye. What you had was Bridget in your eye. Come on, Pop. I know the score. Why else would you surround yourself with these little twisties if they didn't make your blood pressure stand up and smile? Why are you here, Dominic? I was planning all along to drop in as soon as I finished my business with the TVs in Miami. With who in Miami? Well, Uncle Vic. What did I do? Could you tell me? Where did I go wrong? Yeah, you didn't go wrong all right, Pop. I grew up with Ma, remember? Which is my point exactly. The object of you living with your mother was to keep you from getting involved in the business that your Uncle Vic and I are in. Excuse me, Pop, but it was to keep me from being around you and Uncle Vic. It had nothing to do with business. Dominic. Ma told me that. She also told me she was wrong. I thought you'd have a better chance at life, you know, living with her and her people. She thought so too, I guess, until a couple of years ago. She said she finally realized I was a, a true to Bardo. I'm not a prop Irishman. I mean, imagine that a prop Irishman. Hey, show a little respect, huh, Dominic? She said you just like your pop. You were him, and, and he is you, and that is that. You should go get to know him. What took you two years to get here? I wanted to arrive, pop. You know what I'm saying? With some success, money in the pockets. I want you to be proud of me. I am proud of you, Dominic. Welcome to my house. Keep your hands off the help. George, we gotta let Banks go. Why? Because we found a wine glass with his fingerprints on it in the murder girl's apartment. Now, that's pretty sloppy for a guy who took the time to wipe off the murder weapon, right? And then once he wipes it off, he's gonna hide that weapon in his own house? Doesn't make any sense. Couple this. He wasn't the guy that had sex with her right before she was murdered. She could have been in bed with one guy, he left, somebody else came in and committed the crime. Yeah, it's possible, but what really sticks out for me is this wine glass. Yeah. I mean, think about, this glass didn't match any other glass. It was expensive, it had a gold rim around the top of it, it didn't belong there. I think it was planted. All right, and we also got this, check this out now. In the addresses and phone numbers right here, there's a page missing, right? Now, the entry over here doesn't match what's down here, which is the D's. Now, that name right there, Cotton Dunn, I recognize that. Look, making the case is your job, but I agree with you. It's not there yet. I think we should cut Mr. Banks loose. You've got to get out of here. <laughs> your marriage with him is over. Why don't you see that? He's on his way home, Bobby. They've released him. Now leave. Well, if it's not jail for killing Coco, it'll be something else. I'll see to it. He's out of your life. Why don't you do it, Lacey? Just tell him. What the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about us. <laughs> what us? We were a little jump on the side, and that's where it stays. We were good together, isn't that what you said? Uh, it's like the Olympics, darling. Bobby the Dolphin was great at the events, bronze medal and all. But when the games are over, it's time to move on. <sighs> this isn't a game. You know, personally, I would have voted for a silver medal. 
because I love your forming freestyle. But it's finished. But think about how it was with us, baby. I mean, you can't be with him anymore. Isn't that what you said? I'm the best there is. Oh, there's nothing more boring than a lover hung up on fidelity, Bobby. Grow up and get out. You can't treat me this way. I did what we both wanted. You can't blame me just because the cops are screwing it up. I want you tonight. You come to my place or I'm coming here. So what, Pop? Huh? What are we doing? Hey, you got me decked out like a Cleveland cannon. What are we doing? I'm going to sing? I'm going to dance? You're going to finish business. Your business with Uncle Vic. Uncle Vic is in Miami. Yes, and you soon will be. You kicking me out? Yeah, send you to school is more like. With Uncle Vic? The guy's got to be 80 years old. And I'm uh, dressed like Nathan Detroit. Come on, Pop. Uncle Vic is a wise man. And you, Dominic, have a lot to learn about life and reality. I watch you with my friend, Sergeant Lance. A good reason why I don't want to leave. She's hot for me, Pop. You wouldn't know rejection if it bit you on the lip. Less is more. You learn from Uncle Vic. I got a dress, maybe? It's what Uncle Vic expects. If he greets you with an approving eye, life in Miami's gonna be much easier. I gotta go, Pop. Got business to take care of. Here's your truck. My associate Jackie's shoes will go along with you for the ride to keep you company. In case I change my mind, right? I'm going to finishing school with Jackie the Torch for a driver. Hey, Jackie, how you doing? I'll call you from Miami, Pop. I gave this to Coco three years ago when she started working for Monty. How come your name's not in there, Cotton? <laughs> you kidding? She used to tease me all the time about how much room it took up because I moved all the time. So my numbers have to be in here somewhere. How about that? It's gone. You know, Cotton, you got any idea who else's name was on that page? Bobby Dunham would have been on that page. Dunham? He told me they weren't acquainted. He said he knew her just as somebody who worked for banks. <laughs> well, they were acquainted, all right. They've been lovers for the past couple months. Coco thought she was on her way to marriage. You didn't approve? <laughs> no, I didn't. She's a sweet, naive kid. Look at Dunham. He's smooth, got looks. I thought he'd hurt her. Oh, come on. God, why, why didn't you talk to her about that? I mean, you're supposed to talk about things like that with people you consider family. She didn't know I knew. No one was supposed to know. He gave her some cock and bull story about how it was better for his job that nobody knew about them. She told me about it through hypnosis. See, I think she was going to tell me anyway. That's why it came spilling out. You ran a scam on somebody you love like family? She wanted to look back into past lives. You know, second grade, fell off a swing, hated wearing braces, wasn't invited to the school prom. Then we came back to Palm Beach and I started getting nosy. You gotta understand, I tried to plant the idea in her head that she should have a social life. But then I knew, and if she found out that I knew, she wouldn't trust me anymore. I understand the predicament. No. The predicament came a little later when I found out that Dunham was having a long-term affair with Lacey Banks. I didn't know what to do. So I didn't do anything. Hey, everybody does what they have to do. All right? Come on, Cotton. Don't beat yourself up about it, man. All right? Yeah. Be okay. My lawyer says cooperate. I say you've got nerve to be here again. We think you were the object of a conspiracy, Mr. Banks. An attempt to implicate you in the death of Miss Cunningham. A frame. A frame. It was a room full of Monty wannabes. I knew most of them. Right. You know, uh... Now, this was the night before Coco's death, right? Yes, she arranged the whole thing. It was a room full of Monty's faithful. A few new ones. Was Bobby Dunham here? So you've done your homework. Yes, he was here. He's the manager of the swim club. We have nothing in common. Works for the club. Did you know that he was involved with Miss Cunningham? No. 
Was he here that night? No. You mean to say to me that you think that Bobby Dunham tried to get rid of Monty so that he could have me? This is too bizarre. What if he did? What if your husband did drop out of the picture? Monty's worth a lot of money, Sergeant. But I'm worth a lot more. I said, what did forensics say? <laughs> we showed Coco's photograph to five separate people of the swim club. And forensics came up with five clean sets of prints. So? Well, they ran a comparison with the enhanced print that was pulled off Coco's body. Did you get a match? We got a match. Yes. Check this out. Because of the short time, prints are retrievable off skin. Had to be right around the time of death. Five possibilities. And one of them is Bobby Dunham? You got it. Oh. <laughs> Smells like probable cause to me. You get the warrant. You get the bad guy. Oh. I'll get the bad guy. is definitely not up, dude. The tide is out and the pool is dry. <whistles> Sam, yep. did you uh, read your horoscope and star signs today? No, I did not. Not today or any day. Well, you know what? You should. I'm telling you, you, my friend, are in for good news. Really? Something like uh, found money, fulfilling my love life, or unexpected happiness? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So what about the one above that? Is it the uh, same prediction? Sure. Sure. Uh-huh. And the one after? Yeah. They all say the same thing, Chris. Hold on a sec. Are you telling me that you believe the stars have nothing to do with our lives? No. No influence whatsoever. You're telling me that. No, I am saying that I don't believe that Monty Banks has any idea what he's talking about regarding stars or anything else. He's a phony, and he's a charlatan, and he feeds on gullible people's hopes and dreams. That's too bad, because it says right here I should buy my partner lunch for a week. That could be wrong. 